Hey guys, and welcome to another Let's Play. This time, we're going to be playing a game that I have wanted to play for quite a significant amount of time now. Probably, oh, I don't know, pushing 20 years at least. It is a game based on a movie, a very good cult classic movie. I, of course, am talking about The Thing. We're going to be running the original Xbox version of the game on my modded Xbox. We could have opted for the emulated PlayStation 2 version, which would have given us a very nice sharp image. However, the Xbox version has significantly enhanced graphics over the PlayStation 2, uh, especially when it comes to things like textures, bump mapping and lighting. The lighting on the Xbox version was, at the time, a generation ahead of what you, what the PlayStation 2 uh, offered. One of the biggest differences that I noticed uh, and doing research of this game is on the PlayStation 2, when you use your flashlight or something like that, it's just like a weird texture and then it just uses like a bit of a brightness filter in front of you to, uh, you know brighten up what you're looking at whereas on the xbox version you actually have um dynamic lighting and all of that kind of stuff which uh, you know what <laughs> it actually looks really good now of course the game did come out on pc which would have been the best way to play it but it is no longer available on any modern pc storefront uh, i looked couldn't find it however it is abandonware and you can legally play it for free. However, <laughs> you have to jump through a barrel of hoops to kind of jank the game to work on modern Windows. Um, and you know what? I just I'm, I can't be bothered to do that. So we're going to be playing the Xbox version. This game is set about three or so months after the end of the film. This game is also considered canon. So you can think of this as a second part to the original film, which is interesting. Now, I did watch the original film when I was a kid many, 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 many years ago. Um, <laughs> and then I watched it again last summer when the game's librarian came and visited Ah, uh, so, I, I mean, it's kind of there in the back of my head, but I, I, it's not exactly fresh in my mind. But I do know what happened, and I do know the gist of the film. So, let's go. Unfortunately, this game isn't backwards compatible on modern Xboxes, which is a big miss if you ask me but I'm sure there's licensing agreements that have got in the way of that I have boosted the brightness up a little bit as well because this game is very dark now what type of game is this well i'm glad you asked you the obvious conclusion would be this is a survival horror game but actually no it isn't it's a action horror game uh kind of some vague similarities to dead space and you'll, you'll kind of see that as we go through. It's also a squad-based game, which, well, let's not get ahead of ourselves. So we're going to go new game. We're going to go normal. And uh, even on the uh, loading animation there, we have the assimilation complete, which is quite cool. Reminiscent of Blair's computer model. from the film.
Well, somebody enjoyed that little show. Okay. So as I say, this film, uh, this game, does kind of pick up straight after the film, which is cool. I was hoping to watch the film again before uh, I started playing the game, but I just haven't had time. Blake, it's Whitley. What's the situation? Not good. What do you see? Not a goddamn thing in this storm. Have you found anything? Well, your transmitter's down and everything else is foobar. What do you mean? The base is gone, Colonel. It looks like massive explosives damage. Any clues here are gonna be like finding a needle in a haystack. Understood. Do a recon, see if you can find anything that'll give us an idea what happened. I can try to get the chopper back to you within an hour, but visibility's falling fast and the report for your area is not very good. Okay. We'll make a sweep and report back. Roger. Meanwhile, I'll check up on Alpha Team. Or Blake. Just remember it's 40 below out there. We both know exposure could sneak up on you. Keep your team together and get them to shelter as quickly as you can. Roger that. Blake out. So this is us, Blake. And this game is going to throw a lot of tutorials at us. Uh, and I, I mean a lot. <laughs> like, it's kind of insane. Um... But I can explain. Anyway. So our objectives will be uh, at the top. This game is kind of split into levels as well, which is kind of cool. Um, now, it is 40 degrees below outside. So if we stay outside for too long, that blue bar is going to tick down. And then we're going to start taking damage. This, so far, hasn't been a huge problem. Anyway, luckily we can grab up a gun over here and some flares. We're going to be using these flares. So, I'll explain our squad mechanics. These are our boys. We seem to get random... Well, they're not random. We seem to get all sorts of different people, um, you know, throughout the game. Uh, but these aren't necessarily just... What would you call them? Like, you know, NPC randos. They all have names. They all have their own little AI script. And they're all individuals. Now we've got two meters, which we can see. We have the red health bar below their name, and we have a green bar that's in various states, um, just below the portrait. Now, the green bar is extremely important. That is your trust meter. Because anybody that has uh, watched the film will know the thing, the alien, the disease, the virus, it can be anybody. And that leads to a little bit of paranoia, shall we say. So you have to earn and keep the trust of your teammates. And likewise, any of these guys could be a monster. We don't know. So how do you gain trust? Well, you gain trust by not shooting them in the face you can gain trust by giving them weapons giving them uh, ammo healing them uh, so there's kind of a give and take sort of situation here it's interesting you'll you'll kind of pick it up as we go through the game now we can give the squad basic commands we can tell the group to stay or if we highlight them we can actually give them individual orders it's very limited. We can tell them to follow us or stay where they are. Uh, or depending on their class, because there's three different classes, there's soldier, which pretty self-explanatory. They shoot stuff. There's a medic who heals everybody except himself. Cannot heal himself, but we can heal him as long as we have the supplies. He'll also heal you. And we have the engineer. Well, that's the engineer at the top there. Uh, engineers repair things, essentially. Now, everybody can have a weapon, uh, and you can, if somebody starts cracking up, you can actually confiscate their weapon and their ammo, but this will also tank their trust level with you. 
or if somebody is starting to lose a little bit of faith in you, you can give them weapons and ammo, which is a really interesting idea. But uh, your guys, at least as far as I've played up into the game so far, they're pretty bloody good in combat. They're really helpful, but they do have ammunition and they will burn through it. That's worth noting. You can only carry so much yourself. So you've got to really think about, uh, do you want to be giving your weapons and ammunition to these people? Now, we just picked up a spare gun. So we're going to hold on to that for now. Because, uh, well, we don't need to worry too much about these mechanics yet. Anyway, let's head into the base and see what kind of a state we've got left. Blake, you need anything repaired or even a simple bypass and I'm your man. If any of you take on any damage, get back to me ASAP and I'll help you out. I'm not carrying any dead bodies back. I'm locked, loaded, and ready to make shit dead. So, yep, that's basically the introduction to the three classes and the trust system. Now, uh, I don't know why he's got an MP5 and he pumped it like a shotgun. We're not gonna we're not gonna ask ourselves questions like these. Okay, so what have we got going on in here? Well, if you've seen the end of the first film or any of the first film, really, you'd know that this base is gonna be pretty messed up. And uh, yeah, no kidding. We've got blood all over the floor. Lights are out. Let's see if we can't start getting things sorted. Now, we have junction boxes. Now, these basic junction boxes, we can actually repair those ourselves. But the advanced junction boxes, there's not much we can do about. So it's always worth having a bit of a look around and seeing what we can't find. Okay. So there isn't... Ooh. <laughs> yeah, there's just a tutorial there um, showing us how the medic is going to heal us. Now, we can order him to heal us, or we can just walk up to him. If his morale is low or he's starting to freak out, he might refuse. Now, when their morale breaks down, they can do interesting things. They can start shooting you. They can panic. They can run off, or they can self-terminate. Now, if one of your men self-terminates, they're gone for good. So think about that. Right, we've got a little ammo box there, which is full of machine gun ammo. Or machine gun magazines, I should say. Um, these are not unlimited. They will eventually run out. So we've grabbed ourselves a second pistol. And we have two MP5s, which we can see here, because there's two of them. Um, and we also have our pistol with some ammunition as well. Now, we have an inventory as well for secondary items, but we're not going to worry too much about that just yet. Anyway. Oh, this place is just peachy. Let's keep going. Come on, boys. And here's the rec room with the pool table from the film. Where everything went to shit. Well, so much for that. So you can kind of tell how your men are doing by what they say. Uh, this guy's freaking out and moaning because it's a bit cold. Diddums. That's okay. I like how they got the layout of the base here. It's really cool. But uh, this place is definitely not up to code. I'm pretty sure if the maintenance saw this, they wouldn't be very happy. Anyway, let's keep exploring. And that's going to tell us about locked doors locked doors need that's right you guessed it a key but uh we need to go find the key now because that's the first key in the game and the first locked door it actually kind of gives you a big hint to where the key is and there's the helicopter that was blown up in the beginning not great the ski dozer as well now these light poles generally lead you to uh, decent places. So always follow the light poles. So let's get our band of brothers 
Let's see if we can't find a thing or two. It's worth exploring around because you do find items and goodies. Now, let's go. Come on, boys. Somebody needs help. That's not great. Okay. What have we got here? We have pistol magazines. Take as many pistol magazines as we can. And over in yonder, we can find a tape recorder. Now, I'm not going to guarantee we're going to find every single tape recorder, but we're going to find as many as we can. If none of us make it, at least there'll be some kind of a record. The storm's been hitting us pretty hard now for 48 hours. Still have nothing to go on. One other thing. I think it rips through your clothes when it takes you over. Windows found some shredded long johns, but the name tag was missing. They could be anybody's. We're all very tired. There's nothing else I can do. Just wait. RJ McCready, helicopter pilot, US outpost North 31. So McCready was actually uh, one of the main characters in the film. And, uh, well, we see him at the end of the film. So, be curious to see if he turns up later or if there's any references to him. So here is a stash of flares. We can use flares to light our way. And we can also throw in flares and disperse them around. Think of the early... Two Raider games, and we can grab some from here. And uh, yeah, the effect on the Xbox is way better than it was on the PS2. Area looks secure. Yeah, the area is fine. And let's keep exploring this place. Something serious happened down here. We've got a fire extinguisher. Seems useless. It is not. There's plenty of fire in this game. And uh, you can wait for fire to burn out, but you can also put it out with an extinguisher. Anywho, let's take a little walk through here. What the hell? What do you think it is, Captain? I don't know, and I don't care. It looks like a goddamn UFO to me. This shit gives me the creeps. Yeah, yeah, we're not alone in the universe and all that crap. Check it out and move on. I like the way Blair just doesn't give a shit. He's literally just found a halfway constructed UFO. And he doesn't care. So yeah, if you've seen the film. Uh, I don't want to talk too much about the film. I don't want to spoil it. Yeah, I know the film is like, I don't know, what, 20... The, uh, 40 years old, 42 years old, I think the film is, and that is staggering to say. Um, but, you know, it's a really good film. I recommend you watch it. Anywho, let's go. Especially if you haven't seen it already. Like, what's wrong with you? Seriously. If you like horror films, it's a no-brainer. Right, let's go take our key back. Get back out of this... Infernal cold. I mean, it's got to be pretty chilly out here. Minus 40. That's got to be mildly unpleasant, to say the least. Alright. So now we're in the infirmary. It looks secure, sir. But looks can be deceiving. Right. So this is an advanced junction box. So we need our engineer to sort that out. Get some power back in here. Excellent. Much better. Ha! Huh. There's a fella over there who's not looking so well. Okay. Well, we've got some documents. An infected entity has the ability to fragment and survive. Every part of it is a whole. Yep. So this disease, uh, the alien virus... Every single cell is dangerous. If there's even one cell that survives, you've got a problem. And that in itself is kind of a terrifying opponent. 
If an infected entity reaches the mainland, then global infection will occur in approximately 7,200 hours. That's not great. That's not really great at all. So, the virus has the ability to replicate the original biological entity, including the clothing. Now, that's interesting. I did actually look some stuff up, and apparently it cannot replicate clothing. That, that seems to be a bit of a discrepancy there. Uh, it can only replicate biological material. Oh, Christ, what is that? Chill out. Everybody keep tight till we figure out what's going on. I'll tell you what's going on. There's a dead man. Right, so our medic is actually freaking out. If we switch over to his portrait here, we can see he's not happy. If they're kind of looking around and scanning the area like that, they're, they're doing all right. They're fine. If they're looking a little bit shifty, a little bit wobbly, um, they're having a bad time. If they're straight up freaking out like him, yeah, he he could crack up. Um, so we're not going to worry about it too much because it's kind of like a tutorial. But in, here we have an adrenaline hypo. We can actually give him a shot of adrenaline if he needs it. Right, he's calmed down a little bit, but he's still sort of sketched out. As you can see, he's wildly looking around, but he's not panicking like he was. So everybody has um, things that they don't like to see. No, that is not good. So let's see what's on the computer. I have compiled a five-page report from the autopsy performed on the anonymous corpse that was discovered at the Norwegian outpost. It appears that what we are dealing with is some kind of self-repairing entity that has the ability to morph itself into different biological forms. Sounds like a necromorph in a way, doesn't it? Access to medical supplies is limited to myself and Gary. And there's the code. Now, if you need codes for doors, uh, luckily... Yeah, Whitney is our boss. As you can see, he's not following the squad. He's kind of wandering off and doing his own thing because of his bad mental state. But he'll calm down. Uh, yeah, so uh, if we find codes or anything that we need, good old Blake here will remember them, which I like. I like that a lot. So you don't have to write them down or remember them yourself. All right. So we have a stash of medical kits here. We're going to take as many as we can. Are any of our guys injured? They're not. All right. Aha. Let's get this junction box sorted back out. And this is how we save the game. And then we just pick a... Uh, Random save. I wish it was segregated a little bit more because I don't really want to go over my in-progress game uh, and lose loads of progress, but well, hopefully that doesn't happen. Anyway, let's keep looking. So we found a UFO, and there is... Oh, wait, I think that's the Norwegian helicopter that gets destroyed in the beginning of the film. Thinking about it. I think the other helicopter that we've uh, walked past is the one that gets dismantled and used for parts. Now, if we come over here, there's another reference to the film. Whitley, this is Blake. What have you got? One body. Identification says child, no survivors. And what appears to be a... One body? And, 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 and what? And some kind of unidentified craft. It looks well. Colonel. Colonel. Roger. I'll have a chopper there ASAP. There's a supply crate that was dropped earlier near the base. It contains C4 charges. I want you to rig all the remaining buildings and I'll remote detonate them from here. Affirmative. I'll contact you when we're finished. So somebody is walking around like a maniac laughing his head off, which is curious. So Childs here 
is one of the survivors. Well, he's not actually a, technically a survivor because we can see he's dead. So, you know. <laughs> but yeah, he's one of the um, last surviving members of the film. Anyway, and I like the way he's even got his whiskey bottle there that he was drinking. Right, let's go grab up some C4 and blow this place because nothing good has happened here. I guess it's time to bury it all. Probably not the smartest thing to do. Hmm, we're kind of... We are getting close to half an hour. You know what? Let's just finish this area off, shall we? Right, let's plant one charge there. And go back to the main area. Plant another charge. And then get the flock out of here. Yeah, it feels really good to be playing this, actually. And from so far, from what I've played, it's really quite good. Um, it has been on my to-do list for, well, ever since, really. The... Xbox 360 days, to be honest with you. Right, let's go stick that there. Now, let's get back to the evac point and get the hell out of here. I've got a bad about well, keep your bad feelings to yourself, sunshine. We don't need anybody else bringing the mood down. At least, preferably not, anyway. Right, let's get out of here. Head back to the chopper. And that is our mission complete. We can go home. We have scouted the place out. We have planted the demo charges. Time to head back for tea and medals. Right? Right? It would be if I was going in the right direction. Son of a bitch. Yeah, navigation can be a slight problem, especially later on in the game. Because it gets pretty difficult to see where you're going. But uh, hopefully, as I familiar I'll familiarize myself a little bit more with the game, uh, that won't be such a problem. Colonel, we've completed the explosives placement. Standing by for evac. Anything from Alpha Team? Negative. Could be the storm. Must be. I've been getting partial transmissions for the last hour or so. I'm going to assemble my team. When the chopper arrives, I'll have it drop me at Alpha's rendezvous. Negative. You have your orders, Captain. Don't put this mission in jeopardy. I understand, Colonel, but I don't have much choice. Pierce's team is in trouble. Besides, if there are any survivors, I'm the only one on the team that speaks Norwegian. Blake out. Seems a little bit short-sighted. You would uh, want at least a couple of people that talk Norwegian, but hey, what do I know? Roger, Colonel. This is Blake. Have you found anyone yet? Nothing yet. I just arrived. The storm is worsening. It may take a while to find anything. Looks like that little stunt of yours might pay off. I don't understand, Colonel. I received a partial transmission from Pierce. He's found something. Might be research. Find him and get back to me ASAP. Affirmative. Did he say if there were any hostiles in the area? Negative. No hostiles. Okay, I'm on it. Blake out. Alright, and there we have a little bit of a tutorial explaining how light poles work. But, actually, I suppose we could just run over here and save the game. So we can't go through there, because that room has... That's gotta be a few thousand volts. I gotta find a power source. Yeah, there's, there's too much electricity in that place. It's, it's kind of spicy. Let's just say that. Okay. Right, what have we got going on in here? We can go down there and grab some stuff. This looks fresh. Couldn't have been here too long. No. So what have we actually got on us? So this is interesting. We actually end the level, or start the level, with everything we had. We've still got the two MP5s. We've got the pistol. This is good. 
Okay, so we've got a locked door. We have a busted power supply. That's no good. Let's bust this door open. Oh, we've got a little chicken. A little chicken walker type thing going on. Identify yourself. Captain, it's Carter. Christ, where's everybody? What happened here? Some. I don't know what they were, but they attacked us. I thought they was part of the... The... the, the wait a minute. Don't you come any closer. Where the hell did you come from anyways? A chopper brought me in. From the U.S. research station, five clicks south of here. Ah, uh, I'm hurt pretty bad. Don't move. I'll see what I can do. Yeah, that doesn't sound great, does it? So that's just going to explain healing to us. When somebody crouches to the ground like that, that means they're in a bad way. But luckily, in the last uh, level, we actually picked up a health kit. So we can give him a little bit of a top up. So he's not going to trust right. us because we've just area looks secure. come out of nowhere. So it seems a little bit sus to him. But considering he doesn't have any weapons or equipment on him, what we can do is give him Maybe a gun. Maybe I will. And we can also give him some ammunition as well. There we go. And as you can see, every time we give him some ammo, it is putting our trust meter up. But that does leave us with one gun and, you know, only a paltry amount of ammunition. Anyway... We'll get him to follow me. Come with me, buddy. What the hell? What the hell? I don't know, friend. Right, if you could uh, repair that for me, buddy. I need an engineer. And while you're doing that, yes, sir. Um, come on. Why can't I? Where's my gun? Okay, there's my gun. We're going to blast that open. Right. Anyway, with that done, guys, I'm going to save this game. Thank you very much for watching. When we come back, well, hopefully, we're going to continue from here. And I hope you're going to come back because this game is looking pretty good to me. I'm having a good time with it. So as always, till next time.